Okay, so I watched me the second night of the Democratic debates. Almost all of it, actually. Uh, I did not watch the first night, and wow, believe me, just watching almost all the second night. That was way more than enough. Um, it went on really long. But here's my analysis of the race thus far. I thought Joe Biden was actually really strong. I thought Joe Biden, he, he came into the, to the debate, and he knew what he needed to do. He needed to hold his own. And, look, you know, in the first debate, he was absolutely terrible. And I thought that he, I, I was actually surprised at how well he did in this debate. I know he's getting not quite glowing reviews. People kind of like, okay, he did what he needed to do, but it wasn't all that good. I tend to think it was a lot better than people thought it was. Um, he was under attack almost the entire night from everybody except Tulsi Gabbard. Everybody in his sister was going after Joe Biden. Everybody got to take shots at him. And CNN kind of fanned the flames of it a little bit. Um, I know from being in debates that it is hard to do, that is a very hard thing to do when somebody is coming after you to stand your ground and not get rattled and you know hold your own. And I thought he did it successfully. And I thought he came out as really likable and really just reinforced why he is the front runner. Um, again, that's not that easy to do. And he he took he took shots from everybody, and some of those shots were unfair. <laughs> you know, there was Bill De Blasio starts asking him, "What was Bill De Blasio bothering him about?" You know, when you were Barack Obama's vice president, you know, why didn't you say anything about Obama's deportations? Like, huh? That's not even like a reasonable line of attack. It's totally demented and out to lunch. So he, he presents that to Joe Biden. Joe Biden dodges it in a way that I thought was really artful. He starts like, you know, changing the subject in a way that sounds like the subject, but not really. Going like, you know, Joe, Barack Obama had a full plan with um, immigration and he did this and he did that. And I thought it was really an artful dodge. They, the, the, the moderators, they go to the moderators and they hand it right back to Bill de Blasio and he goes, you dodged the question. Why? <laughs> so, so lame. But Joe Biden handled it, took it in stride, and I thought it did really well. The big loser of the night was Kamala Harris, honest to God. In the first round, the first 40 minutes was just about health care, and both Joe Biden and her were kind of weak on it. But she actually was really weak, and it was her plan that was being discussed most of the time, and she really honestly didn't have any good answers. Now, as I game it out now, this is, this is bad. I, I effectively see her, her race as finished. Um, that may sound a little bit too much, but here, here's the logic. When you are in third or fourth place, and she's somewhere in between second and fourth place, you can't afford to have an off night. Joe Biden had an off night in the first debate. He was absolutely awful. And he lost something like 10% in the polls, and now he's kind of bounced back. I thought he was pretty strong tonight, so I think he's going to be a strong front runner from here going forward. When you're in third or fourth place, as Kamala Harris was, you cannot afford to have a bad night. She a, was a momentum play to begin with. You have to come out solid every single time. And she took, she took shots, and she looked really bad at points, and that kills all of your momentum. Remember, people are watching this. Maybe you who are the voters, we aren't, the voters aren't necessarily watching it. I'm only watching it to, you know, to, for, to, to see how it plays out. But people who, the insiders, people who are going to decide to send money, decide to sign up with your campaign, you know, the players are watching this and they are, they are responding to everything that happens. And you honestly can't afford to have a bad night if you're in third or fourth place. You really can't. And she had a bad night. Now, this gives us to, brings us to the other thing. Tulsi Gabbard was actually slamming. She came out slamming. I thought she was great. Um, so much so that she's, I wouldn't actually say that she's in the running for the nomination, but she's a dark horse now. I actually see a path forward for her. Let's assume it depends. She's still a long shot. But prior to this, I see her, saw her as having no chance of the nomination whatsoever. If she makes it to the next debate, which is an if, but it's possible, then I see a path forward where she could potentially actually get the nomination. It's not likely. As I game it out now, the, this, is, this is how the race looks. Joe Biden is a much stronger front runner today than he was before this debate. Like I said, he was good. 
the key thing that people are not seeing is that he was really likable. And, you know, you got most of the rest of these Democrats are, are having the woke primary and they're falling all over themselves to be the most SJW. And he can afford to play along with them. Why? Because e even if he's got some SJW leaning policies because of how they dragged him to the left, he strikes every single person who sees him. And this was reinforced last night as just a reasonable, by the numbers, middle of the road type of guy. He just strikes you as kind of like an average Joe six-pack type of guy that doesn't strike me as a, as a phony image. It strikes me as who he is. And he's thoroughly likable, honestly. And he showed baseline competence tonight, better than I thought he was capable of. I thought he did really well. I didn't think Joe Biden was capable of doing that well. Um, so I see him as a strong front runner now, and I see a potential where he may actually be able to defeat Donald Trump um, based on likability. It's, again, that's not a done deal, but it's possible. See, there's a, there's a type of politician who isn't very inspiring, but they're baseline competent. You had your John Kerry, your Mitt Romney, your Hillary Clinton. Um, those, are, those are the main ones in recent times. He was not in their category until last night. I wasn't seeing baseline competence in him. Last night he was baseline competent, uh, George W. Bush. Now, here's the, here's the magic ingredient for him, though. When he is baseline competent, he's a lot more likable than they are. That was, their, that was their great Achilles heel. John Kerry isn't very likable, nor there was, neither was Mitt Romney, neither was Hillary Clinton. He is showing some signs of, of getting to the level of baseline competence, meaning doing what needs to be done. He was relatively strong. I give him like a B minus B in terms of performance, which is way good enough if you're the front runner, and it's really good enough if you're a likable front runner. That's what I'm saying. So I put his, I rank, I, I give him a pretty strong chance of winning the nomination. I would say it's about 55% him. And I didn't see that going into the, until last night. Um, now, if he stumbles, the next most likely person of winning the nomination is Elizabeth Warren. And I would get, put her at like 15%. If he stumbles, that's the key. I don't foresee him stumbling because he was good enough. He's starting to hit those like solid baseline competent politician levels. And like I said, he's got a magic ingredient. He's a really likable guy. He strikes you as a decent, down to earth kind of blue collar, you know, from Ohio, train riding kind of guy. He really does strike me as that. Doesn't strike me as an act. Strikes me as sincere, which is gold in politics as far as I'm concerned. So, second most likely nominee is Elizabeth Warren. I don't foresee her being able to do anything to increase her stature. The only thing she is positioned, she is the best position to benefit if Joe Biden were to stumble. Outside of her, I give almost nobody else any chance. Kamala Harris greatly harmed herself. And the big thing of the night was, wow, was Tulsi Gabbard. That was a devastating takedown of Kamala Harris. I mean, devastating. I've never seen anything quite like that in politics. Normally, there isn't that solid of a punch landing. That was even better than Kamala Harris's takedown of Joe Biden in the first debate. It was rock solid, and it was devastating. She attacked a record as a prosecutor, if any of you didn't see it. And there's some of those lines. Wow. I mean, you put, she goes, you put 1,500 people behind bars for, for marijuana, for possession of marijuana, then you laughed about legalizing marijuana. Wow, was that devastating. I mean, that's brutal. She'll never live that line down. And like I said, she needed to come up in the world. You cannot be in third or fourth place and have an off night where you're struggling because then you, you, you can't afford to go down 5 6% in the polls. That's the problem. See, Joe Biden was the front runner in the first debate, so he could afford to, to do poorly, go down something like 8% in the polls, and then rise back up. But if you're in second, third, or fourth place, you can't really afford to have a night like that. And she did. She was bad. Like I said, as I pointed out in some of my other videos, she's only really good at one thing, being a prosecutor with rehearsed lines. I could see her being an excellent prosecuting attorney, but she's terrible on the defense. Terrible. And it showed last night. She doesn't have good answers when... when, when Tulsi Gabbard went after her. She didn't say anything. And then the things that they said after the fact, 
you know, they start accusing Tulsi Gabbard of being a, basically a stooge for Russia, huh? <laughs> you know, and she didn't have any good answer for any of that stuff. And she, she didn't have any good answers for her health care positions. So I see her as really weak at this point. I don't see her as a potential nominee. I put her down with um, the, the also-rans or the, the wild card shots. This is how I game it out. I'd say it's 55% Joe, likely Joe Biden is the nominee. If he does not stumble, he will almost coast. If he does well in the next debate, it's going to be really hard to beat him. And if he, if he does it any better than he did tonight, ugh, I just can't see anybody overtaking him. Um, second most likely nominee person to take the nomination is Elizabeth Warren. The, thir the third is Kamala Harris, but she's way back. I would say I would give Elizabeth Warren about a 15% chance of taking the nomination. I would give Kamala Harris about a 7% chance. The rest of the people, there's only four, and I put them all, they're all wild cards. Um, that would be Tulsi Gabbard, Andrew Yang, um, Tulsi Gabbard, Andrew Yang, Mariana Williamson. Yeah, Mariana Williamson's a wild card. It's a long shot, but... You know, she was she did really well in that first debate. She was the most sought, she was the most looked up person on Google after that debate in every single state of the union. So she did a lot better than you think, and she's actually kind of connecting. No, I don't think it's likely that she'll be the nominee, but stranger things have happened. Um, Bernie Sanders. Those are the only four that I fore foresee taking the nomination, those wild cards. Bernie Sanders. Tulsi Gabbard, Andrew Yang, or Marianna Williamson. After that, I don't see anybody else coming close. Even Cory Booker. I mean, if you listen to, if you read the news today, they said Cory Booker did great. And no, no, he didn't. Not, not from what I saw. You know, he 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 had this line that was really good the first time he used it. Guys, you know, we shouldn't be fighting each other. We're just using Republican talking points. The first time he said it, it sounded great. The second time he said it in the same debate, it sounded a lot less great. The third time he said it in that debate, it was like, oh, my gosh. Gosh. Come on, man. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what debate they were watching where they thought he did well. He didn't do well at all. And he needed to do really well. So, the only potential wild card I see is Tulsi Gabbard. Why? Because she's a lot stronger in debates than she's she was really effective in that debate. And if she makes it to the next debate, which it's not entirely clear that she will, but if she does, she could have another breakout moment like that where she's effective again. That would put her in the hunt. That would put her in like second or third place. And then she could possibly be the next, the person who, who, who you know, hoping to catch Joe Biden if he stumbles. Outside of that, the most likely scenario for this primary is Joe Biden becomes the nominee. If he doesn't, it's his to lose, as far as I can see, and he's now hitting those notes. The reason why I was starting to question whether he was going to be the nominee a month ago is that he was really doing bad, and he was really poor in that first debate. If he had another poor showing like that, he'd be in trouble, and it would be Elizabeth Warren. I'd be telling you Elizabeth Warren is most likely to be the nominee. She's in the strongest second place. She's, she's the strongest next in line. It, it's contingent on him stumbling, though. He has to start doing poorly in order for her to rise. And right now, I don't foresee that because, like I said, he did a lot better than I thought he would do. And he's really likable. You know, I can't stress this enough. That's gold in politics. That's why George W. Bush, you know, a lot of you don't like W. But he, was, he has a personality that, that was really likable. And the, the other politicians who all lost, think of them. Al Gore, not likable at all. John Kerry, not likable at all. Hillary Clinton, slightly more likable than those guys, honestly. She can sometimes be charming. I know I'm weird. I'm the only one in America who thinks that, but I do think it. Mitt Romney, none of them are likable. Joe Biden has likability, a lot. He has a genuine down-to-earth, studied, natural kind of, hey, Uncle Joe is here. That's why they call him Uncle Joe. He's got that quality to him, and it shows. And if he can just hit baseline competence, which I'm now convinced that he can because he did, 
you know, I don't see how anybody wrests the nomination away from him. He has the lane of the moderate all to himself. Everybody else has been falling all over themselves to be the most woke SJW candidate, and it hasn't served them, quite frankly. You know, some of them would have had a lot better chance, like, um, who's the one from New York, the blonde hair? She would have had a lot better chance if she tried to be a moderate, Kirsten Gil Gillibrand, but she tried to outwoke everybody too. Actually, Kamala Harris would have had a better chance if she tried to be a moderate, but she tried to outwoke, everybody tried to outwoke one another. And it was politically ruinous, but also in terms of winning the primary, stupid. How you win a primary is you differentiate yourself from the other people. You're something that they're not. That's how Trump won. I mean, with Trump, it's easy to do. Nobody's like Trump. Trump is Trump. But, you know, in terms of you, if you were strategizing, if I were advising somebody, I would have said, look, Joe Biden is the moderate in the race. He's the one with the main claim to the center lane. Go for the center lane instead of competing with, you know, all the rest of them to be the most SJW one. I would have had said, said, go for the center lane. So, anyways, anywho, that's how I see it breaking down. I would say 55% Joe Biden. If Joe Biden stumbles, Elizabeth Warren is the next most likely nominee. After that, it's a long shot for almost all of them. But the most likely long shot is still kind of Kamala Harris, but she's in a way weaker position now. And then after that, the next most likely is honestly Tulsi Gabbard or Marianna Williamson. Marianna, Marianna Williamson is weird, but that works nowadays. That's kind of what people like. That's kind of what people are looking for. Um, Andrew Yang, he's got to do better. If he makes it to the next debate, he has a sort of a long shot chance, but he has to be better in these debates. He doesn't make enough of an impact in the debates. Outside of that, you know, Bernie Sanders, I really, just to, you know, if you're still thinking Bernie Sanders, Bernie Sanders has a really, really hard time getting past his base. His base loves him. They're lockstep with him. They like him a lot. But he has a really, really hard time growing his support past his core supporters. He really does. And I don't foresee that changing anytime soon. It was, it was somewhat of an illusion how strong he was when he was running against Hillary Clinton because he got the, the he, he, he dominated the field of I'm not Hillary Clinton. So he got all the not Hillary Clinton votes, all of them. If there were three or four people in the not Hillary Clinton camp who were running alongside of him, he probably wouldn't have done anywhere near as well as he did. So it, it's a bit of an illusion how popular he seemed in the last race. That's as, far as I, that's as far as I see it. I don't think he's all that strong. I don't think he's all that good. He, like I said, he's very appeal. He has a strong, solid appeal to his core supporters. But he's one of those type of boutique candidates. The Republicans have a bunch of those too, like a Rand Paul or Ron Paul, uh, Ron Paul, the older Paul, who, yeah, their core, his core 10% loved him. But he had a really hard time growing past them. And Bernie Sanders is the same way. So... There you go. That's how I game it all out, kids. That is all for now. Amen.